So last week I was sharing with you how we could use paints and inks to add pattern to our acetate sheets. And this week I'd like to take this a step further. I love the black and white acetate. I think it goes on beautifully on a variety of projects. But today I wanna to share with you about how you can color acetate. And I'll be sharing with you some of my favorite mediums. I have quite a few that I wanna share with you today. And I'll also touch on the ones that don't work and why that is. So let's get started. So we're gonna start by using our stamp samples from last week. We have ones that are on our archival ink, on a Stazon ink, and on acrylic paint. And these three ones all react to certain coloring mediums differently. So I'll be sharing with you the pros and cons of each coloring medium and the differences between each of the different surfaces. So I first wanna talk about some of the markers that we probably already have on hand, and those are some sort of water-based marker. So that's watercolor markers, Crayola markers, uh, Tombow markers, there's lots of them out there. But I just wanted to show you really quickly what happens when you add them to the surface. So they look like they go on pretty well. I'm doing this on the stamped side, just so you can see this. And they're working okay, but what you'll find is that as they start to dry, they're going to start to almost go in little dotted patterns, almost like when you add water to a plastic surface. It's not gonna be as consistent, it's not gonna be as nice, and you're not gonna be able to keep the color staying where it is. So it might be a little bit hard to see, but you can see there's a whole bunch of white lines showing up now over an area which I've fully covered. Then you might be able to see this a little bit better if I continue going with my color. So you'll add in color and it will move around a little bit, but it's gonna start almost just pilling onto one area of the page. It looks nice, but you can see here how the paint is starting to separate out. It's not staying where it needs to be. You're getting a lot more white spaces. And that's just the nature of watercolor markers. They will not work well on acetate. But since we, a lot of us have them, I wanted to talk with you about it. The other thing is they're not going to dry. I had pieces that I tried where I let them dry for an hour or two. They were still as wet as when I first put the ink on. So just be aware of that, that these types of markers are not gonna work on any of these surfaces, whether or not you're working on archival ink, you're working on a Stazon ink, or you're working on the paint, they're just not going to stay. And basically all of it is coming up off of my hands. And you can take a baby wipe and it can basically remove all the color from the surface. So I wouldn't suggest using watercolor markers with this, but I did want to show it to you just so you understand what works and what doesn't work so that if you're curious to try it, you can try it. Just don't expect it to actually dry or seal. Because again, watercolor markers are meant to absorb into the surface. That's what makes them lovely, uh, but they won't work well on a surface like this. So one thing that will work on this is Faber-Castell Pit Pen. So this is basically a pigmented India ink and this works beautifully on this project. And so basically you can add it onto the surface. It's gonna stay where you want it to stay. One thing I will mention is that when you're working on the stamped side like I am, and you could also make the choice to work on the other side if you really wanted to, if you didn't want your stamping and your coloring to be on the same side. I like having them both on the same side because when I flip it over and add it to my project, it really protects all of that color that you've added. So if you're adding other mediums, you don't have to worry about it blending or marring all the time you've put in, creating a beautiful image. And so it's basically just adding this to the entire back of the image. And you can see it goes on beautifully. It doesn't smear the archival ink that you've already added. The only thing about them is they do tend to, it picks up a little bit of the archival ink on the tip of the pen. It's hard to see on camera, but basically what I'll end up doing is just taking it and putting it on another piece of paper to try to clean it off as well as I can. And so that's the one negative thing about using the pigmented India ink on the archival is it tends to do that. This is also where I can come in with another color. This one, I should have done this one first, which is the lighter yellow, but it still will work in places. And again, you all sometimes can contaminate your markers this way. So again, just grab a piece of paper, clean it off. It'll be able to get back to its original color and you can just keep using them that way. So you'll probably end up with a couple of your nibs getting a little bit dirty, but that's okay. What I like about these pit pens is the nib has a little bit of give, but they're not too much give. So this works quite well for these techniques. And then, so I'm going in with a little bit more of the red. You can see how nicely that works on the surface. Pigment ink and India ink is something I would highly suggest using 
on these surfaces. And what's nice too is you can use the side of the pen. You don't have to always use just the tip of the pen to add in these details. Unfortunately, when I was removing some of the watercolor ink, I accidentally pulled up some of the archival stamping. I think it hadn't fully dried or fully cured. And because I was using a lot of pressure, it did remove a little bit of the detail from that one leaf. And if you haven't left the layer of India ink before dry completely, you'll notice that you will pick it up. So it depends on how much you wanna try to move it around before determining what the final color is going to be or you know you can basically let this dry in between layers and that can also create some really beautiful final results and so you can see that when I flip it you still have really good color it looks really good it looks really nice it works really well for coloring the acetates I find that I like adding in the color on the one side but I really like how it looks on the other side once it's fully dry so maybe wondering if you can use alcohol inks with these stamped images, with the archival images, I would not suggest it. This is an archival image, and you can see that as I add it on there, it's basically removing all the stamping. So you could be very careful and try to go along the edges, but then you have to be extremely careful with where you add your ink. And I find it's quite a bit lighter than the pigment inks, and so it's not my favorite choice for this. I like sticking with the pigment inks just because I like how they look a little bit better when it comes to coloring and just the general look. But if you happen to have Copic markers and you want to use them, you just need to make sure that every single little line of detail in there, that you don't overlap any of it or else you're going to basically completely obliterate it and remove it from the surface. So I also recently purchased these metallic brush prints from Zebra and I thought I would just play with them on the surface and I was surprised how well they worked. So I'll just show you what I ended up doing with this. So I ended up adding in a couple silver spots onto this one leaf. I added in a few little blue spots as well, just to let the color a little mix together a little bit. And what I found was these metallic brush pens. I got them to use on black paper because that's what they're kind of designed for, but they work amazingly on these surfaces. And what I find interesting about it is just the quality of the mark making that you get and this, the blends and just how nicely it dries. It dries extremely quickly. I'm not sure if this is a different type of pigment ink or what's in it, because it is an ink marker, but what I find so interesting about it is just how well it works on these surfaces. And so I'm just gonna quickly do this and I'll flip it over and just show it to you and just show you what this looks like. Because I have to say that these were one of those really surprising things, especially if you want something quite metallic and quite bold, this is, the medium that I would really suggest to use with acetate because I just find it works so beautifully and works so well. And it, it dries perfectly, it dries very, very, very quickly. And now when I flip it over, you can see you've lost none of that detail. You can see all of those black areas underneath, but then you get those little bits of beautiful color in there and that works so, so well for this medium. So another really great option for adding color to these that will dry really quickly are acrylic paint pens. For this project, I'll be using the acrylic painter paint pens as well as the Artistro paint pens. And if you're interested in a video more specifically about paint pens, check out the description below. I've shared a couple ones of mine that have been quite popular. And so with these ones, the one thing you need to be aware of is they're gonna go on uh, fairly opaque. I would actually start with the areas that you want the lightest, like you can cover over top of the black because you are going to see it through on the other side. But if you want to have areas in the center that are a little bit darker, then you need to be aware of that while you're adding this onto your page. So for example, if I wanted in some orange areas in here, I need to add them in right away while the paint is still quite wet. And you'll notice that with the paint pens, they do dry fairly quickly. So this is where you're gonna have to work a little bit more quickly if you wanna create those layers. And then I'm gonna finish up with a little bit of red in the center. And now when you flip it over, you'll see how those colors blend together. 
And so you need, you can see that the yellow has still taken over quite a bit. You can see some of the orange in there and also some of the red, but you'll see there's actually more orange on this side than what you're seeing. So you need to think about what layers are going on first, because just because you layer on layer on layer on layer, it's not gonna all show through on the other side. So that is something to be really aware of as you're adding the color, but you can see that they add really, really easily. They dry really, really quickly. You can just cover up the entire surface. You don't have to worry about all those fine little lines because you will be able to see them through on the other side. And that's what I love about doing the back side of the acetate and then flipping it over is now you don't have to be so concerned about having perfect color mixes. You can, you can draw over things and it will look really, really good. And you'll see this area here, I just added uh, some wet paint pen on dry paint pen. It will actually scrape up the other paint pen. So you need to be aware of that, that if you let it dry, you just wanna make sure that you don't scrape off that layer of paint by adding in new paint colors. So you just have to be a little bit careful, but it's also a great way of fixing mistakes. If you find that you don't like the way this looks, you can just scrape it off with your finger or even just with a little bit of the pen and that's going to give you that color that you want. The nice thing about the paint pens is you can actually create blends by just adding them on top of each other. Because unlike other surfaces, when you're working with acetate, you do have the blending ability because it does stay wet a little bit longer than what's normal for a paint pen just because of the type of surface. Because again, acetate, it nothing dries quickly on acetate. It's going to take a little while to dry and get those colors down. So something just to be aware of, it's not gonna work the same as paper. And that's why it takes a while to figure out which mediums work best, not because they don't work, but more just because you have to be aware of the nature of the medium. It's not gonna absorb. It's not going to work in ways that we're used to with a lot of our other papers. And I always like flipping it over. And you can see because I didn't leave areas of red, I just tried to add it on top. It's still coming through. It's just a lot lighter. So again, things to realize. So this is almost where if you want those bright centers, I would start with the bright centers first. And then if you're finding your paint pens getting a little dry, give it a bit of a shake, give it a little bit of a press like that. And that's the way you can kind of keep it going. And so in this case, I would actually start with the red first, let it blend in with the orange. And what's really nice about this is like, again, I'm not being very precious with the coloring. I'm not putting in a lot of time. I'm just adding in color really rapidly just to create a little bit of color down on the surface. And now I'm gonna come in with the yellow. I just love that you can just basically cover up everything and still have it work out really, really well. That's the one benefit of using these types of pens and using this type of material. And because I kind of stamped a little bit here, there's no reason you can't just add in a little bit of color to help with that. And what I'm gonna actually do is come in with a little bit of my gold paint pen here. I'm just gonna put in a bunch of gold as well too, and that should actually show through. I'm just gonna add a little bit on the edge here. We'll see how that looks on the other side. So yeah, so that gold did come through and you can see the little speckles there. So that works a lot better. So you can see that just by doing your shading a little bit different on each leaf, you're getting a little bit of a different look. Just gonna finish these last leaves just so that you have an example that shows all the different layers on one flower using one type of medium. And this one again, I'm gonna go the other way as well. Like again, just try to figure out which, which direction you like to do. Do you like to start dark to light, light to dark? and how you wanna add it on. Again, it's gonna be a little more opaque than using the pit pen. Pens, the pit pen's a little bit more translucent. So you can see that that translucent color is still there. So when you're adding it to a surface, let's say like with white, it, it doesn't quite matter as much, but you can see that this has a much more opaque look. This has a much more translucent look. So depending on where you're going with it, it just gives you some different color options. So the next things I wanna share with you are how to use some, maybe a little bit more out there mediums than maybe what you're used to, uh, which are things like distressed crayons and water-soluble oils. So let's start with the water-soluble oil colors. I'm just gonna do this on a small bud, just so you can see it. You can add it, but what I find is that it has a tendency to smear. Um, you won't be able to tell super closely, but it will smear, especially if you wanna to try to blend it. You're gonna get some darker color. But if you're careful and you work in really small areas, there's no reason you can't add a little bit of the oil pastel color to it. Just expect there to be a little bit of softer lines. And again, you're gonna have a hard time getting into small areas with it just because of the tendency it has to smear. And because it again is a more opaque medium, you'll find that you have to worry about the blending in the same way that you worry about it with the acrylic marker. 
You can see from the tip of my oil pastel that it is smearing. And so it's not a choice that I would use on a stamped image just because of the nature of this, but I just wanted to show it to you as an option. And I'll show you later how you can actually make these work um, by just using the technique a little bit differently. But that does give you good color, but I still prefer these two a little bit more than this one. This is because you don't have to worry about the oil pastel smudging and creating darker and muddier areas. But the other option we have are distress crowns. And if you've never used distress crowns, this is a great medium. I use them all the time in lots of different areas in my art journaling. And what's nice about them is you can put them out and you can smear them out. I'm finding it getting less smudging than the oil pastels, but I am getting actually a little bit of smudging with it. When I'm working on the archival ink, it wants to pick up more. So you have to be careful. You can't really use baby wipes on it because it will actually pull away the color. And I'm noticing that it's, it's softening the color a little bit here, a little bit more than I really want it to. But what's nice about this is you can add in some colors. You can add in some mixing. It's going to be a little less smooth than using the pit pens or the acrylic markers, but it is an option. What I like about it is you can easily smudge it out. So it is, it is a really nice option. And you can see that color. It works really well. It's just, again, it's a different look than the other two. But it's something to be aware of that it's going to cause a little bit more smudging just on the archival ink. So those are the mediums I wanted to try on archival, but I would really suggest long term to stick with the stays on ink. I just find that it works a lot better. First of all, when you use it with the pit pens, you're, what I find is it doesn't pick up any black on it. It's not picking up any of the colors. It's just going straight down on the page, which means that you're going to have less mudding of your markers and it's going to work really, really well. So you can see on this yellow one, where I usually have a fairly black tip by the time I've used this on archival ink, instead it works better. I don't have the same issues. Yeah, so it's really nice to actually have a pen that you can get really good color down. You can put it down really, really quickly, but you're not having to worry about it ruining the tips of your pens. And that's why I would prefer using the Stazon over the Archival. I also noticed that the Stazon seems to be staying a lot better. I don't have to worry about if I smudge it too much, it's going to come off in my hand. And I think that's just the nature of the Archival, it's being oil-based over um, an ink like this that's really meant to work on surfaces that are completely non-porous. That's why I choose the Stazon over the Archival. What I really like about these pit pens is because they have the very fine point, you can do the details, but then you can use the sides of it for just adding a lot of color down really, really quickly. What I like about these ones is they have enough bend in the pen that you get a really good result, but at the same time, they don't take over too, too much. And then when you do things like this, when you blend a dark on light together, you're just going to basically just need to wipe your pen in between just so that you can clean the pen off. That's just gonna be the nature of any time you wanna blend these colors while they're still wet. And because we were working on the acetate, it is going to stay wet for quite a while. And the same kind of goes with these zebra pens. Uh, the zebra pens are kind of the same thing that we had with the archival versus the stays on, is they go on really nicely. Again, they completely cover the surface. So if you wanna add in some highlights, you're gonna just need to be able to add them first. The paint pens work the same way as the archival. You usually still get a really good color. It works really, really well. Again, I wouldn't necessarily use all these different mediums on one. I'm just wanting to show you just how different mediums work together, which is why I'm doing so many different mediums just on one picture for today. But yeah, you can see that it works really, really well, adds color really easily. If you don't have a paint pen, you could also use a brush for this. There's no reason you couldn't. It's just gonna give you again a different look. So kind of depends on what you're going for, for style and design. And that's just gonna affect the color choices that you make. And the area I feel like the stays on shines the most is actually using more of the oil pastels. You're still gonna get maybe a little bit of smudging, but not nearly the amount of smudging as you would with the archival. You have a little bit of darkening of color. I can see it's adjusting a little bit as it goes on. So yeah, you're getting very little color pickup. The hard thing with the archival is that because it's just not staying as well on the acetate, you're dealing with more blending issues. This is a much more pure color with the stays on than I ended up with the archival. And the same actually applies with the distress crayons. I find that with the distress crayons, I can add the color, it looks more pure. I can blend it out more. 
I don't have to worry about it pulling up and I find that you can even wet it a little bit with a baby wipe and you can try to blend and move it and get a little bit more smooth look. When I tried doing that with the archival, what ended up happening is it basically pulled up the image. And so what you're running into is with both the Distress Crowns and the oil pastels is it works much better on the stays on than it does on the archival. So unless you don't know how much you'll do this and you really want to stick with the archival, I would highly recommend getting a stays on ink pad. It's going to give you just better results and I think you're going to be really happy with what you finally get from your image. So you can see the paint, you're not getting the same level of details you are with the inks. So if you're looking to color, I would stick more with the inks. So the one thing is if you're working with the acrylic, if you want to add in a lot of those water soluble oil pastels, you can see there's no movement. It works really well with it. It actually gives you really good color. So it's one of those things that it kind of depends on where you want to go with it. If you were looking to do a lot of oil pastels, I'd maybe start with the acrylic because it's going to be strong. It's going to hold up to it. So you can see with this one, you get really bright color. It looks really nice. Um, and then you have these ones too. And then if I was actually gonna take a baby wipe and I wanted to move this out, you can definitely blend that out and do some really interesting things with it. And the paint is definitely not gonna move. The stays on probably won't move, but I think the more water you add, there's a better chance of it coming up. But because we're looking at using it on acrylic, it works really, really well. The other option is you don't always have to do the back of it. You can add this on top, but then what you're gonna be running into is that anything you add on top could smudge it, right? And so that works for really any of these mediums. You could really do the painting on the other side, but then I think what we're running into is that you couldn't do the ones that were more opaque like this. You always have to do them on the back side. Some of the lighter ones, you could make it work, but I have to say that I do like using the oil pastels with the acrylic paint. I feel like it works really, really well. So I wanted to show you all three samples when they've been added onto a white background. So I did use art glitter glue for attaching these onto the surface. I did make a mistake, or what I feel like is a mistake, is if you look at it from an angle, this is maybe a little hard to see, you can see where some of the dots where I added in the glue. Even though this does dry clear, the thing is you can see a little bit of it here. If I was being smarter with this, what I would have done is to stick it in behind the flowers. And I did that in a few places. But my concern was I was a bit worried that maybe the pit pen um, might lift a little bit or squish out a little bit. I wasn't worried at all with the opaque acrylic paint, but I was a little bit worried with the distressed crayons because a few of these ones, the pit pens and the distressed crayons, if a little bit of water is added to them, especially on something like acetate, they may bleed. So, but I did add in a few little dots of them in behind and not seeing any bleeding. So I think next time I just go all in and adding the glue in behind instead of along the edges there, because you can actually see it at certain angles. You can see the edges. I don't mind too much though. I find like it looks pretty good. So we have the one on the archival ink here which worked out pretty well, all things considered. Uh, but I think I like the one with the stays on again, a little bit more. I like where the, the color saturation is. I like how the ink and the paints and the mediums react a little bit better. Again, I have less smudging. And then this one's on the paint. And as much as this was not a very good image that I had originally stamped, but you can see that by rubbing it out and adding in a lot of oil pastels, that gives a very different look to this. So instead of being really, super detailed. This one's a little bit more soft and it's kind of taken on a different life of its own. It maybe has more of a painterly look over a super detailed look. So you can see that by just adding in your mediums and adding in different types of mediums, you can get a lot of different looks to the same project. So I hope this is giving you some good ideas on how you can color with acetate. It's interesting because there's a lot of mediums that work, but there's other ones that don't work as well. So having a good understanding of the mediums and their properties can go a long way to make sure you get really great results. And have you ever used acetate before in your projects? I would love to know how you use acetate, if you alter it, and how you like to use it in your creative projects. Please leave a comment below. I would love to start a conversation with you. And if you're interested in any of the mediums that I used today, or even the acetate that I used, I have it all in the material list in the description below. And that's just another way that you can support this channel. And some of those links do include affiliates. And that basically means that I get a small commission at no additional cost to you. So thank you so much for your support. And if you're interested in seeing my video about how to stamp on acetate, 
Click here. This is the one that I did last week where I explained the different paints and inks that work well with acetate. And if you're looking for a video on how to use acetate in the art journal, click here. This is one I did a few weeks ago that I go over how I use tissue paper and acetate together in an art journal page. So I'll see you in those next videos.